Okay, so this is the day after the big event. This is uh, the Monday, and um, I've got a squeaky chair, so just bear with me. I may have squeaky chair and needy cat uh, through this, and maybe even screeching cars outside. So, because this is a daytime thing, <laughs> there's a lot that could go wrong. So, we're going to dive straight into what was bought. Uh, when the pile is as high as I am, sat down, you probably see what, what, what's gone on. Slight issues along the way, as far as <laughs> getting a bit carried away, but it's all been justified. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm having a clear out in the room. I've had a whole load of stuff, thankfully, gone out. This is the catalyst, I suppose. Do you get me to sell off some stuff I've been thinking about selling for a year or more? I know I'm never going to touch, so that's good. So I've pushed a pile out there which I can uh, take out to my work and um, slowly go through and list it on eBay and Facebook groups. So uh, keep an eye out for that if you're looking for anything. There's big ones and small ones. There's all sorts of things on there. So um, you'll see it. It's Facebook groups. We're all in them. We all see it. So I'll try it there and then what doesn't sell, stick it on eBay. So I'm already justifying what, what, <laughs> what I've got here uh, for good reason. So we'll get into that now. So now I think the best way to go through this is that there's sort of three types of, uh, well the kits fall into three categories I suppose. What I've bought, what I pre-ordered to, to get, so I'd, I'd still technically bought but I didn't buy it on the show, I knew what I was getting. Um, it was like a Hanant's order and then there was something new this year which was sort of kits gifted to me, stroke given to me for builds as so sort of ongoing commissions um, and also a swap that I did with a friend. So. Uh, Let's look at what was bought first, I guess, that's the way. So, we'll dive into the pile. First off, after one of these. Uh, so, Kate was very good this year. Uh, we went to the kit swap, and she's pretty much talked me into um, two kits, I guess. She, she is good like that, you know. If she knows that I'm getting it, and I, it, I'm just getting it because I like the look of it, well, that's not really the, the best way. But if it's something that's on topic, I, you know, Spanish of a War or something that I can put on the channel or something. She's very encouraging, so that's good. Lucky in that respect. So this is the Heinkel HE70, which is the sort of reconnaissance plane that was used in Spain and it was a, a personal, uh, a uh, transport aircraft for, for people as well in Germany. Uh, there's even a Hungarian version as well, which had a round or uh, radial engine, which is in this box. So this is the Matchbox Rebox of this by Revel. So basically the Matchbox kit with updated uh, decals, so they're slightly better, cartograph printed. So you've got raised panel lines. It then went on to the ICM kit, which I've attempted and I actually struggled with in the past, but uh, this was quite good. So this was three pounds out of the kit swap. And um, the thing to note of this is, unbelievable, you've got this great big piece of carrier film. You've got this lovely set of de decals like that. And it was packaged with the carrier film like this, like that and um, over time the decals were stuck so I had to peel them off. Um, there's a little bit of pitting on the, on the decals at this side which does include one of the ones I'm going to use but I think that's just on the paper. I think the actual the actual uh, transfer decal decal will um, be okay in itself so I'm sure most of you know what this kit is so we don't need to go through that but that's something I just wanted in the background. I'd like to get one on the table at some point so uh, that ticks the box there. I did see an original uh, Matchbox boxing of it, which was £7. I thought, oh, that's a bit much, really, for what it is. You really don't want to be paying more than the fiver for that. And then to get it at the... To pick it up at the kit swap for £3, that was perfect. So that's the first thing. Staying with the theme of the kit swap... Ooh, let's get this one out. Now, I know about this kit, but I haven't seen it uh, personally listed... Uh, in England. It's a Canadian company, so this is Hobbycraft. Ooh, this is the DO17EF, which I have been looking for uh, for a while if I wanted to pick it up. It was a little bit expensive, to be honest. Again, Kate kind of talked me into it because it is quite a nice project. You know, this is another one of those long-term ones. I like doing these old-school kits. It's actually not that bad. It's recessed panel lines. Um, it is known as the Flying Banana. I've seen that because uh, they've got this massive uptick in the bottom of the fuselage, which is actually easily remedied. Uh, the top section of the fuselage is nice and straight like it should be, it being the flying pencil, it should be nice and flat. Um, and all you really do, considering some of the stuff I've done recently, this is going to be nothing, um, 
you just sort of slice this fuselage part here, sand a bit off, and where it's going like that, you take a bit out and then it drops down like this. Obviously fill it, join the top on, and you're away to go. So the only real massive problem with this, I would say, is the clear parts, which um, there's loads of vac form available for it. So pretty simple, it's still on Hannant's actually, a lot of that. So with the ICM kits coming out now in 148, if they may go back and do these early ones. It's unlikely, but you know, they may do it. Well, but yeah, that's no problem. The, the joy in this is sort of bringing up an old kit to modern standards. And what I was trying to say there is with the ICM kits, there's quite a lot available. So there's, there's etch seat belts for DO17s, whether it be a Z, E, P, whatever it is. Um, there's even wheels, although I did look at them. They at Armoury Hobby do um, resin wheels and they were at Telford. I had a look. Um, and they're very very flat you get this uh, occasionally with resin uh, wheels they, they put that flat spot into it and it was almost like a flat tire it was very strange so i didn't like the look of that i could probably make something out of what's in here to be honest because it was only smooth tires and uh, well they're smooth tires with the indented kind of rib going along so it wasn't um a raised rib it was indented so that would be easy enough to describe in it, you know you can go as far with it as you want so that was something nice so that's kit swap i've never actually been to the kit swap ever so that was interesting to see and that was actually at the tail end of the kit swap so they were still in there of course who on earth was going to buy a 148 do 17 e stroke f well me who knew i was going to walk in there so they were purchases at the show and we're continuing that theme yes here we go uh, with what I purchased. Now, as you'll see, if it had stayed at this, yeah, that's pretty good. So what, five kits have come out with? It's not a bad thing. Um, and these are all pretty much bargains. So what we've got here is a Classic Airframes HE51. Um, I've got the Roden kit as well uh, from the Edward Jewel Boxing. So there's four schemes in there with one kit. Uh, this is another kit which even still has uh, Condor schemes. And all I ever really wanted to do was one of the later ones that has quite a lot of a heavy camouflage. Uh, there's one that a surgeon used which has got a red cross on the side and then I wanted to do one of the really early ones with the double um, circle uh, roundels on the top uh, so that's what I can do now and this was five pounds and listed as part started and I talked to the chap and he said he had to list it as part started and um, <laughs> all, it, all it is is uh, someone sprayed even sprayed not hand painted sprayed the inside with ROM02 and, and that was as far as they got. Classic Airframes defeated them apparently at that point. So all the resins in here, all the etched metals in here, even the um, even the decals which are... are they? Yeah they are. Yeah. There's even, like I said, Spanish decals uh, in this one. Well actually there's two sets. There's even the float plane uh, version in this as well and there's the... So I mean it's actually very good for um, you know what it could have been and there's no cracking on these decals either so you might be able to use those schemes um where is the scheme i don't know what you can see i'm a long way off i realize that but this is two schemes you get as well as the float plane that's included and the floats so that was nice um also met my mate paddy finally um shout out to paddy um who dropped these off he found them somewhere i don't know where he found them that's uh, the icm polycarp off decals for the i10 so, I mean, I think there's like 12 schemes in there. So that was nice. Chucked them at, the, uh, at me at the table and that was then done. Then we get on to exciting stuff. So this is a kit I, I wanted last year and I missed out on it. It was 16 pounds. I mean, this is again, great. This is the special hobby rebox of the Classic Airframes second version of this. I've got the initial version from Classic Airframes, which um, it doesn't, it has a, a kit, um, a plastic, uh, molded fuselage right up to the end and then you get a resin um, end to it to uh, have the flanges that are, are notable on the on the cheery then classic airframes updated that with a, a full resin nose which is here um, and that's the one that a uh, special hobby of reboxed so now I've got both types so I can actually do those as well uh, which is nice again I, I want to really do um, like with the classic airframes HC51 and the Rodan one it'd be a nice you know uh, build together same with these so the, the updated and the uh, non-updated one that was 16 pounds I think you know you can't argue with that 16 quid for a 48 one there's tons of resin in here so that was brilliant also I was not expecting this uh, I thought this was 70 second because they had a tape over where it says 148 this is fantastic from my point of view this is exactly what 
my SIG, my interest is all about. This is a 148th uh, Letov S231, which was used over in Spain with the Republicans as a kind of contender to the I-15. Um, this is a full resin kit, quite expensive obviously, it being Planet models, it was it's kind of around, I think it got, they ended up being about £35 for this. It's not a big plane, but again, it, I'm trying to, instead of building sort of 109s and all this stuff from Spain, trying to get some of the more unusual things that have an impact when they're on the table. And resin kits, I'm really getting sort of into these, so it's a nice large uh, top wing there for the biplane. Huge, um, good rounded uh, fuselage sides there as well. Everything's really nicely done. Um, Planet Models is known for having good cast resin. Got a full resin engine. Obviously, why well, everything's resin. So I mean, there's no etched metal in here. So I'm assuming um, there's even a seat in here with uh, harnesses uh, moulded on it. I expect because this is kind of coming out of the same place as CMK. The only uh, slight worry I might have is the um, struts for the wing, they are a little bit weak looking, um, so whether they can hold that up I'm not sure, but that'll be interesting. Typical, typical stuff when you come to this, you know, you've got black and white and, uh, yeah, there's, there's the struts again, we'll go through these, uh, all of these are, are do close-ups on camera and do some, um, inbox reviews on but yeah we've got cabane struts and and um the wing struts which actually do look a little bit thin so um i'm sure we could add a little bit of strengthening to that and uh, nice decals this is a czech aircraft um the only decals you actually use is for the spanish version is these two the rest is all painted on marking so that was it for me the first time picking up stuff on on, on at the show i uh, also got a, a book which isn't really that interesting then um, there was the collection from Hannant's. Now this is themed a little bit differently. As you know, I've been building some models, selling a few on eBay, selling a few to customers. Um, these were on a very good deal. You know, German things sell, unfortunately, whether we like it or not. So I picked three of these up because this is basically the fine moulds, I think it's AZ Models kit, which seems to be a copy of the fine moulds kit, which is a very nice kit. Now reboxed by Special Hobby. And this is pretty much a profi pack. So you've got some resin wheels, You've got photo etch frat and you've got a nice kit and, and good decals. Um, so the scheme is the Finnish aircraft, so you get those free. I've, I've also bought a set of uh, Barracuda decals which are all G6s, so they'll be going into different, different schemes. So not too interesting, but um, something nonetheless. Got a couple of Falcon um, vac form sets which I've been looking at for ages. Again, I don't like to get these because these are sort of around £12 each. Then you got three pounds postage, and you think, God, you have fifteen quid a time. But if you get it picked up at um, Telford, you get ten percent off and no postage, so it makes it much better. So this is um, canopy set for a whole. This is just a one hundred and nine set. Um, this is mainly for V three, but there's a whole load of the um, early canopies. So from E three back to B, basically, you've got the early ones for B C D. Then you've got E one E three. Then it runs on through into the later ones, but it's, you know, it's good to have in the set. And this one is just for, from what I want, it's, I, didn't, I couldn't believe it was actually here. It's the a G50 early. Um, so that is for, uh, I don't know if you remember, I did a Flying Machines G50. Uh, it's the Siri one, but the, we're talking about, actually I've got it here. What we are talking about is this aircraft which is the enclosed canopy version of the Fiat G50. This kit did not come with the resin insert, which turns it into the one I want to do. And then I sent off to Hannon saying that, and they sent me a whole bag of resin out of another kit, which still didn't have the bit that I needed. So I've got two engines, two cowlings, two bits of resin everywhere, but I just don't have this insert. And when I was trying to make it out of the kit part, it didn't work. So um, to save a lot of messing about, they've actually uh, usefully molded um, this one with the section that's missing out of that kit. It's designed for another kit, so it's here we're looking at. So all I've got to do is cut that out and blend it in there, which should be a lot easier. Um, so that looks pretty good. So happy with that. <laughs> it's 12 quid to save a birthday present from two years ago that I really want to build. That's kind of what's happened here. So I never actually bought that kit. 
so I suppose in one sense I'm up, but I, you know, who knows. <laughs> Can't worry about these things when you're in this deep. <laughs> uh, so that's what I got there. A couple of um, vac form sets. Then uh, this was on special offers on Hannans for about four or five months and I wanted to get it. It's quite good, about £19 again. One forty second special hobby kit. It's the Fokker D2 and that is um, Grunz, Grun, Grunzweig's Planes, which uh, obviously I don't know anything about that, <laughs> but I'm assuming it's quite well known if you're into the World War One aircraft. An early one, and as I was told by a couple of people, it's more or less a Fokker E1 Eindecker with a wing on the top. So, just something nice to have when I get the feeling to do it. And that, that was it as far as picking up from Hannans. Uh, there, what there was a few other things. There's resin wheels for a few builds I want to do, and decal sets, which is always what you do with with um, Hannans. Um, Decals for the Easy 8 Sherman because I want to do one with the black and green um, scheme and light guards because that wasn't in the Edward set that you get. Hey, they uh, cleverly took that out of their Edward sets a long time ago. So if you want light guards for Shermans, you've got to buy the generic set on its own. But it's only sort of two pounds. So that was that. Now we get on to um, stuff I got from a swap. Oh well, it's actually it's swap stroke uh, Facebook buys. So let's start with the Facebook buys because they're really great. And I'm sure you guys are going to love it. So, I'm sure you're all familiar, like I mentioned before, this Facebook group where you buy and sell. And occasionally, very interesting things come up. And there's a whole stack of models this guy was selling. And I spotted that. And that is quite a big thing for me, because this is a very rare, well, sort of rare or expensive kit, depending on how you want to go about it. It's about sort of up in the £70 mark. Um, I got this for £30, um, and this is a full resin kit. The only issue is we've got yellowed vac form canopy. Um, I could probably make something out of that. I was talking to some guys who said you could actually uh, push some millipart or something in there to make a mould and then pull vac form over the top. So that should be easy enough. I have sent an email off to Special Hobby because they had one at Special Hobby. So you, you never know, they may be able to send one out for me. It's a bit of a long shot. But this is a really nice aircraft quite big as well that's the fuselage and that's the wings it's a big thing again this is all resin um, again I don't even really care when, when or if I'm ever gonna buy this this is almost like the sort of models I collect because they're just um, very nice they're, they're good to have you know it's something very different not quite <laughs> blimey um, not quite seen any of this before. I think you've got to actually mould your own propeller out of what you get there. <laughs> and um, these bits, which are is one way of uh, moulding the small parts, I guess. But yeah, it's all there, I suppose. You're not looking at a whole load of um, sheet styrene and thinking I'm going to build a land version of the Arado. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to get there one way or another. You probably have to replace a few of the struts and things, which is simple enough to do with plastic card and um, other bits and pieces and that's the fun of these um, these resin kits as far as I'm concerned so yeah I haven't done a deep dive on this one yet there is a little bit of a grainy texture I can see it's almost like wood grain so um, a little sand over just to polish that up would, would sort that out I think but yeah, I mean, you know, bit up my street, isn't it? So this is Arado AR95, land version, so it's got spats, basically. It was a float plane, and they sent one over to Spain that had um, landing gear on it. So that was one. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, yeah, in the, um, the other thing I bought from the same seller on eBay, uh, Facebook, was the Fiat BR20. Again, this is a kit that's sort of upwards of 50 quid. Again, it was on, we got the two for 30, I think, or 35, something like that. And this is just, you know, just imagine what this is going to like if it's, it look like if it's ever built. It's just a large Italian bomber. Massive wingspan, it would look really, really great. They were used in Spain, this version, 
Um, the M version is famous for being used in the Battle of Britain. This is the version before that. This isn't the M, which is the Battle of Britain one. Um, weirdly, uh, this is a spe again. This is a classic airframes kit, and weirdly, they never did um, Italian uh, Spanish schemes, nationalist schemes. <coughs> I don't know why, because this is one of the, this kind of the only place that's ever really had anything to do. It was barely used in the in the Second World War by the Italians because it was useless by that point. It was sort of ahead of its time in '36 when it was starting to come over to um, Spain. But by the by the end of the war and beginning of the First Second World War, I mean it was it was just uh, bait for. <laughs> it's fighting what looks like a fairy former there. So I mean, you know, if that can shoot it down, <laughs> it's probably not that great, is it? Um, so there we go, that's one to have in the background. Then we get on to swaps, so there's a few 172nd kits that you chucked in that I've, I've done, um, and a Canberra. So um, I did want the FX48 Canberra, I wanted to do it as a, as a jet for the channel. Um, looking at it, it is it's from the day when um, the panel line engraver at um, Airfix really was trigger happy, whoever that was. But nevertheless, it, yeah, it should turn into something quite nice. Quite a large aircraft actually, in 48. A bit bigger than I expected, if I'm totally honest. But this is the more recent version, so the, the decals are actually half uh, decent. Um, although I've been speaking to a friend who's very much up on uh, the Canberra, and we might be doing a different scheme, so I'd probably be using the, the generic ones, but probably not either of this. That's my cat scratching at the door, if you can hear that. Um, so, that was the swap, and that was uh, things I bought on Facebook before. So now, on to probably the most exciting stuff, I suppose. Oh, no, sorry, there is one. This was in Hannance as well. I mean, it was. Uh, I think this is where the resin wheels are, actually. This is part of the hazard hat. Yeah. So there's some resin wheels and stuff in there. This was just on um, special offer. It was dropped to half price, so I thought, well... Why not, obviously. Of course I did. So, then I met up with um, the chap that I made the boomerang for. He was very happy, so that's good. Um, and it did go the way I thought it would, but actually looking at this kit, I think this is two very different kits to the boomerang. This actually looked not too bad at all. So this is the Wiraway, which is the companion to the boomerang, as far as uh, all that um, CAC sort of building is confirmed, uh, concerned. Um, so we're going to do this one as well, so it's in the same scheme and looks the same and similar next to it. So that's looking pretty good. You know, I've got no time limit on this, so that's a bit better. I can take my time with that one. And he also wanted me to build this, and I'm super excited about this. I'm, I'm sort of chomping at the bit to get on with this one. The Fokker G1A, which is a relatively new release from, uh, what, Micromere, I think that is. Um, so we will get into an inbox review of this very soon, that will be coming up this week, I'm going to film it today after doing this. Uh, it's a lovely thing, it really is. This is a Dutch uh, twin-tailed or twin-boom bomber, well fighter bomber I guess, actually I'm calling it a bomber, it might even be a fighter. No it is a fighter, it's like the P-38, it's not a bomber, that's my mistake, sorry. Yeah, it's um, it's a fighter aircraft and this is again multimedia kits, you've got uh, decals all through this with... Um, they actually look sort of quite raised, um, so I don't know how they're going to go. Uh, we've got mask set cut in there, and we've also got a photo etch fret as well. Um, clear fuselage, so that's how they've done that. Then we've got a whole bag of bits here uh, with the tail booms, uh, the wings. It all looks very, very, very nice actually. And I'm hoping it should be a relatively straightforward build, but you never know with these short run kits. So we will uh, do a a full inbox review on that, very shortly, as I say, I'm, I'm excited to have a look at that. Um, so we had the wear away, and um, I think it's sort of part payment, you chucked this one in for me, so um, I was very chuffed at that. I've been trying to get my hand on this, it hasn't actually made it into the UK yet. All of these kits came out of a, um, a cellar that was Eastern European. It looks like there's an awful lot going on in um, the Ukraine, there's, I don't know how many manufacturers are coming out of the Ukraine at the minute. Uh, Micromir is um, a Ukrainian company, I believe, he says. We've got a Ukrainian flag on the side, so I'm imagining. that Rodin is obviously Ukrainian. Um, 
And there was a whole load of other things we were looking at, all really amazing kits. Every single one we picked up came from the Ukraine, so uh, there's some good stuff going on over there. And this one, again, I'm going to be doing um, a, a review of. I did actually reach out to Rodin to see if they wanted to send me one after they'd actually sent some other stuff. Didn't hear back, which was strange. You would have thought, considering, you know, Legion Condors, my sort of thing, you, you might have heard something, but uh, no, nonetheless, not heard anything yet. Um, and there we go. So you've got the three schemes that we used in Spain and one Luftwaffe scheme. And uh, there we are. Arado 68. But I think as a trainer, it's got guns firing on the front, but... I don't think you'd sort of hop in it too quickly to go up and fight some um, aircraft. It uh, looks like a bit of a pondering and slow old thing. Um, but this is a new release, much in line with their HE-51, so uh, we'll have a look at that as well and see, um, see how everything's looking. Right, and I think that more or less brings us to an end um, as far as what I got. Rather a lot of stuff, too much. Uh, it's made me send out almost the same amount of kits out the door. So <laughs> it's always a good sign if it makes you do that. You know you've gone over the top. Um, sort of readdressing the balance here as far as I'm concerned, thinking about what to do with the channel, um, thinking about where to go next. So it's all good news from my point of view. So this draws, as I say, this is a bonus episode really, the Telford special to the series. Um, a scale modelling weekly that I've done so hopefully you've enjoyed that I met quite a few of you at um, Telford coming up to the table and it was all great um, feedback really really fantastic to meet each and every one of you so uh, thanks for coming over and making the time to um, say hello um, and I've taken all your comments on board it seems as though season one was a success so we'll have season two and we'll carry it on more or less in the same theme I'm just going to try and refine it a little bit polish it and um, make it a little bit better for your viewing basically that's literally it um builds are uh, gonna go uh, a little bit tank heavy i think um here and there I've, I've actually found on going through and clearing out the room a couple of half started um tank kits that i think well it'd actually be quite nice just to rattle on through those it's uh, it would be almost like therapeutic for me to uh, knock a tank tip tank tip oh, tank kit together um, and we've also got the Easy 8, so that's going to be started um, very soon. Uh, commission builds are going to be ticking on in the background, and I'll share with you my progress on those. I've got a couple of 172nd kits I want to rattle out. I've got the things that were ongoing up to Telford, so the Edward BF109, the ICM um, I16. I've got an HE112 in there in 172nd scale. So there's going to be lots of different things that are going to come to you over the next months, running up to Christmas which will be out when they're ready and I'm sure they'll be enjoyable. Um, there will be inbox reviews being carried on. Um, I will do monthly updates, so we'll call this one November, so I'll do a monthly update for December and same again in January and then look at starting the next series. Um, so there we go, I mean that's everything. As far as Telford's concerned, I did. I started vlogging it, I was going to go around and take pictures. It was just so mad on Sunday, I didn't have a chance. I got, went and got my Hanant's bundle, I got my knife out, was just about to cut it open, started talking to someone, never saw the inside of that bag. Uh, I think it was five hours later before I got back actually to able to sit down. It was already three o'clock and we were thinking about picking up, packing up. I've never had it like that. I met lo loads of you. I would name check all of you, but it would be just too long. So uh, you know if you met me and we had a conversation, we had a great time. It was really good. Met a load of YouTubers, met a load of friends I've been speaking to on Messenger and on different Facebook groups. Met some guys, uh, some of the um, foreign guys so uh, over in the International Hall. Uh, brilliant chaps to speak to. Uh, so it was really, really good. I've not done Telford like that before. Usually <laughs> tend to be a little bit insular and don't um, meet loads of people but as far as I could think everyone I wanted to sort of speak to and make sure I shook hands with I think I did so I was really happy with that and uh, yeah hopefully you all enjoyed it too let me know in the comments below if you went to Telford or if you've seen any of the update videos I'm not going to share loads of stuff because I, I got to the um, competition room at like three o'clock on the Sunday and I was amazed that there was still stuff there so not so great this year as far as documenting the show but i'm certain i saw loads of people filming it so there's going to be plenty of that on youtube so i'm sure you won't go um you won't be short of stuff to watch so until the next time thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video